Ancient scrolls that were buried in volcanic ash during the eruption of Mount Vesuvius are now being deciphered 2,000 years later, thanks in part to artificial intelligence. This morning, something really cool. Artificial intelligence helping to solve an ancient mystery from the Roman Empire. It all involves scrolls from a library that was buried when Mount Vesuvius erupted way back in 79 AD. You've heard of Pompeii, the ancient Roman city destroyed when Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD. The world's oldest mystery just got cracked by a computer, and the results are honestly wild. We are talking about a secret room filled with over 1,700 scrolls that were turned into charcoal by a volcanic blast nearly 2,000 years ago. For years, experts thought the ink was gone forever because it was made of the same organic material as the burnt paper. They assumed that looking for black ink on black, charred papyrus was like looking for a black cat in a dark room during a power outage. But they were wrong. AI just decoded the first pages, and the message is a total reality check for the ancient elite. You won't believe what a Roman philosopher had to say about the rich people who were essentially paying his bills while he lived in their guest house. The Nebraska dorm room miracle. The biggest breakthrough in the history of archaeology did not happen in a dusty tomb or a fancy museum. Instead, it happened on a computer screen in a college dorm in Nebraska. For over 200 years, the scrolls from the Villa of the Peppery were considered a lost cause because they looked like burnt logs and were just as fragile. If you even tried to unroll them, they would turn into black flakes and the text would be lost for eternity. It was a heart-wrenching situation for historians who knew that the greatest secrets of the classical world were sitting right in front of them, yet they were completely inaccessible. But then came the Vesuvius Challenge, which was a global call for help launched by tech entrepreneurs and scientists who put $700,000 on the line. The mission was simple in theory, but basically impossible in practice. Read the unreadable. A computer science student named Luke Ferreter was one of the people who took the bait. He spent days and nights training an artificial intelligence to look for the tiniest textures on the surface of the carbonized papyrus. It would not be possible without modern AI and modern scanning te techniques. People have wanted to read these books for hundreds of years. You see, when the ancient scribes wrote with their ink, it was made of carbon and gum, while the paper was made of the papyrus plant. When the volcano hit, everything turned into carbon. To a human eye, and even to most standard x-rays, it all looks exactly the same. But here is the deal. The AI could see things we could not. It was trained to recognize the crackle patterns and the subtle ways the ink slightly changed the texture of the page as it dried centuries ago. After countless hours of scanning and machine learning, the program finally spit out a result. It found the letters for the Greek word porphyrus, which means purple. That one word changed everything because it proved the system worked. Soon after, other geniuses joined the effort and they were able to pull out over 2,000 characters from the first scroll. This was hands down the first time a human had read these words since the era of the Roman Empire. The crazy part is that they did it without even touching the scroll physically. They used what is called virtual unwrapping. This is a process where a high resolution CT scan creates a three dimensional map of every single layer of the rolled up paper. It is like taking a crumpled piece of paper and smoothing it out inside a computer program without ever risking a tear. What most people do not realize is how much data this takes. We are talking about terabytes of information for just one small section of a scroll. The scans have to be so detailed that they show the individual fibers of the papyrus. Once the AI knows what to look for, it can start to connect the dots and show the shapes of the Greek letters. The results were so clear that historians could actually identify the author of the text. This was not just a random shopping list or a record of taxes. It was a deep piece of philosophy written by a man who lived in the villa right before the volcano blew its top. The day the mountain swallowed the sun. To understand why this library is so special, you have to understand the nightmare that happened in the year 79 AD. Most people know about Pompeii, but the town of Herculaneum was much closer to the volcano and got hit way harder. It was a wealthy seaside resort where the richest people in Rome went to vacation and escaped the heat of the city. One of the biggest houses there was the Villa of the Papyri, which many believe was owned by a man named Lucius Calpurnius Piso Saesoninus. This guy was not just anyone, he was the father-in-law of Julius Caesar himself. 
This place was the absolute height of luxury, filled with beautiful gardens, bronze statues, and a massive library that was the envy of the Roman world. On the day of the eruption, the people of Herculaneum saw a massive cloud of ash rising 20 miles into the sky. They didn't initially know it was a volcano because Vesuvius had been quiet for hundreds of years, and many people just thought it was a regular mountain. But then the cloud collapsed and sent a wave of hot gas and rock rushing down the mountain at over 100 miles per hour. This is what scientists call a pyroclastic surge. It hit the town in an instant, and the temperature was over 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. This was so hot that it didn't even give things a chance to catch fire and burn away into ash. Instead, it baked them. Basically, everything organic was turned into charcoal instantly. This includes the people, the trees, and the scrolls in the library. Because the town was buried under 60 feet of volcanic mud and ash, it was sealed off from the air and moisture. This preserved the scrolls in a way that no other library in history was ever saved. If the library had been in Rome or Alexandria, it would have been burned in a war, stolen by raiders, or simply rotted away over the centuries. But because Vesuvius buried it, the library stayed exactly where it was for nearly 2,000 years, hidden beneath a layer of solid rock. When explorers first found the villa in the 1700s, they didn't even know what they were looking at. They thought the scrolls were just pieces of burnt wood or charcoal from a fireplace. They actually threw a lot of them away or used them for torches before someone finally noticed that they were shaped like rolls. Even then, the early archeologists were like a bull in a china shop. And the papyrus are almost made out of the same stuff. So you need a bright, very brilliant x-ray beam to be able to tell the difference. They tried to slice them open with knives or soak them in chemicals to get them to open up. Most of the time, they just ended up with a pile of black dust and a lot of regret. The scrolls that survived those early experiments are a miracle in themselves. They are so brittle that even a slight change in the humidity can make them fall apart. For centuries, they sat in a museum in Naples, and everyone thought they were just silent monuments to a disaster. No one believed we would ever be able to read the inside of what essentially looks like a rock. But the very thing that made them unreadable, the carbonization, is also what kept the ink from fading away entirely. It was like a time capsule that was locked with a key that didn't exist yet. Herculaneum was preserved much better than Pompeii because in Pompeii the ash was light and things rotted, leaving behind empty spaces. In Herculaneum, the heavy mud turned into solid rock and protected everything inside, giving us a direct link to the day the Roman world ended for these people. The hidden words of a master. When the AI finally started to decode full sentences, the scholars were shocked by what they were reading. They expected to find famous poems or stories about the gods, but instead they found a very specific type of philosophy called Epicureanism. This was a school of thought that was all about finding peace of mind, seeking modest pleasures, and avoiding pain. The author was a man named Philodemus, and he was basically the house philosopher for the family that lived in the villa. His job was to teach the rich Romans how to live a good life without being obsessed with power and money, which is pretty ironic considering he was living in one of the most expensive houses ever built. The decoded text is like a direct message from the past that tells us to stop chasing things that do not matter. One section of the scroll talks about food and says that people who think expensive food is better are just fooling themselves. It argues that if you are actually hungry, a simple meal is just as good as a lavish feast. This might not sound shocking today, but in a world where Roman elites were spending fortunes on exotic birds, rare spices, and complicated dishes, it was a huge slap in the face. Philodemus was telling the richest men in the world that their luxury was a trap, and that they were making themselves miserable by trying to impress others. And get this, the scroll even talks about the color purple. In Rome, purple was the color of the emperors and the highest ranking officials. It was incredibly expensive to make because it came from thousands of tiny sea snails that had to be harvested and processed by hand. Wearing purple was the ultimate status symbol, but the scroll argues that the joy you get from a purple robe is not real joy. It is just an illusion of power. The AI found these words in a house that was decorated with the most expensive art and furniture money could buy. It is like finding a book about the dangers of consumerism inside the headquarters of a massive retail corporation. The crazy part is how conversational the writing is. It doesn't read like a dry, boring textbook. Instead, 
It reads like someone talking to a friend over dinner. Philodemus uses examples from everyday life, like the way people act at parties or how they worry way too much about what their neighbors think. He was a master at pointing out the tiny ways that humans make themselves miserable for no reason. The AI has uncovered sections where he mocks people for being afraid of death and says that once we are gone, we won't feel anything. So there is no point in worrying about it now. He wanted people to focus on the present and the friends they had around them. What most people do not realize is that these writings were likely never meant to be seen by the public. This was a private library for a small group of elite thinkers and their students. These were the forbidden thoughts of the Roman world. If you were an emperor, you wouldn't want your soldiers or the common people reading about how power is an illusion and that peace is more important than conquest. The villa was a sanctuary for ideas that were too dangerous for the streets of Rome. Now, the AI is acting like a historical whistleblower, bringing these secrets to the light after two millennia of silence. The text also hints at the way the Romans used the poor for their own entertainment. There is a section that describes religious festivals as nothing more than big shows for the wealthy to flex their money. It says that the gods do not care about the gold and the sacrifices, and that it is all just for human ego. This is some of the most subversive writing to ever come out of the ancient world. It shows that even back then, there were people who saw through the lies of the powerful and tried to find a better way to live. The library of the papyri is essentially a time machine for the human mind, showing us that our ancestors struggled with the exact same things we do. The success of the Vesuvius Challenge has started a new gold rush in the world of archaeology. Now that we know AI can read these scrolls, governments and universities are talking about going back to the villa to finish the job. For decades, everyone was too scared to dig because they didn't want to destroy the scrolls they couldn't yet read. But now, we have the technology to scan deep into the earth and see what is hidden without moving a single stone. There are plans to use tiny robots and advanced sensors to map out the parts of the house that are still under 60 feet of rock. Do you think these ancient lessons about chasing status still apply to our world today? What lost book or author would you most want to find in the buried library if we could scan the whole thing tomorrow? Let us know in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe for more deep dives into the world's greatest mysteries.